And I now invite His Excellency Kim Song, Chief of Delegation of the Democratic Mr. President, on behalf of the Delegation of the Democratic People's Republic of Korea, I would first like to congratulate you, Mr. Tijani Muhammad Bande, on your election as the President of the 74th Session of the United Nations General Assembly. I express my hope that under your able guidance, this session will be crowned with an excellent outcome. Mr. President, the current UN General Assembly is held at the time when the global attention and demand for world peace and development are remarkably increasing more than ever before. Peace and development, a common aspiration of the present era, are the pillars of the UN activities and the main objectives that regulate all the UN activities. Despite the efforts by a large number of UN members, peace and development are still faced with serious challenges. It is related to their flagrant violation in the international arena of the principles of, of respect for sovereignty and sovereign equality enshrined in the UN Charter. Unilateralism, which holds up the strength as almighty means, leads to the infringement of sovereignty of many countries and the tension of overall international relations with the threat of peace and the restraint of development. The UN Security Council, entrusted with an important mission to ensure world peace and security, has been reduced into an instrument for the strategic interests of a specific country in total disregard of the international justice, thus pursuing sanctions and pressure and even the regime change against selective countries. In view of the international situation in the last one year, the United Nations is required to further enhance its role and that the prevailing reality, where the principles of respect for sovereignty and sovereign equality are flagrantly violated, serves as a serious lesson that True peace and security can be achieved only when the states possess powerful strength of their own. Mr. President, Comrade Kim Jong-un, Chairman of the State Affairs Commission of the DPRK, in his historic April policy speech, advanced the country's central tasks at the present stage of consolidating material foundations of socialism by concentrating all its efforts on economic construction and elucidated reasonable ways for ensuring peace on the Korean Peninsula. Present situation marked by increased hostile acts against our country demands that we hold higher the banner of self-sufficiency and self-reliance in the socialist construction. We have a solid foundations of self-supporting economy, reliable scientific and technical forces, an invaluable tradition of self-reliance. These are our precious strategic resources which cannot be bartered for anything. Under the seasoned leadership of Comrade Kim Jong-un, Chairman of the State Affairs Commission, our people are now making devoted efforts to resolutely overcome difficulties and challenges and glorify our republic as an independent, powerful country a country of the people where their ideals are fully realized. The key to consolidating peace and stability and achieving development on the Korean Peninsula is in the full implementation of the DPRK-US joint statement agreed and adopted at the historic DPRK-US summit meeting and talks held in Singapore in June last year. More than one year has passed since the adoption of the June 12th DPRK-US joint statement. However, the relations between the DPRK and the US have made little progress so far, and the situation on the Korean Peninsula has not come out of the vicious cycle of increased tension 
which is entirely in attributable to the political and military provocations perpetrated by the U.S., resorting to the anachronistic hostile policy against the DPRK. Comrade Kim Jong-un, chairman of the State Office Commission, in his historical policy speech, stated the position that there was a need for the U.S. to put aside its current method of calculation and approach us with a new one, and will wait with patience for a courageous decision of the U.S. Assuming that the U.S. has had enough time to find out a calculation method that can be shared with us, we expressed our willingness to sit with the United States for a comprehensive discussion of the issues we have deliberated so far. It depends on the U.S. whether the U.S. DPRK U.S. negotiations will become a window of opportunity on an occasion that will hasten the crisis. The historic inter-Korean declarations, which greatly excited the fellow countrymen in the North, South, and overseas, as well as the international community just one ago, are now in the standstill without even advancing into the main phase of implementation. It is attributable to the double-dealing behavior of the South Korean authorities, who performed the act of a handshake of peace before the world people, but behind the scene introduce ultra-modern offensive weapons and hold joint military exercises with the United States targeting the DPRK. The introduction of the latest offensive weapons and the U.S.-South Korea joint military exercises targeting the DPRK constitute a flagrant violation and challenge to the agreement in military field on completely halting hostile acts against the one side and refraining from building up armed forces for implementation of the Panmunjom Declaration. The improvement of inter-Korean relations can only be achieved when the South Korean authorities put an end to the big power worship and the policy of dependence on foreign forces encroaching upon the common interests of the nation and fulfill their responsibility assumed before the nation by implementing the inter-Korean declarations in faith. Mr. President, theme for the general debate of the current session titled Galvanizing Multilateral Efforts, Poverty Eradication, Quality Education, Climate Action and Inclusion reflect the most essential points of the SDGs to be achieved by the UN Member States by 2030. The government and people of the DPRK are now making active efforts to attain the 2030 SDGs through vigorous struggle to build a powerful socialist country, upholding the banner of self-reliance and the first voluntary national report of the DPRK on the progress made in implementing the SDGs will be submitted to UN in 2020. Practical measures should continuously be taken to actively assist developing countries in their efforts for sustainable development by enhancing the roles of the UN and other organizations within its system in economic and social areas. It is vital for all UN member states to create a peaceful environment in achieving the 2030 SDGs. From this standpoint, my delegation extends full support and solidarity to the government and people of Syria in their strenuous efforts to regain the Syrian Golan occupied by Israel, defend the national security sovereignty against the destructive and subversive plots of the hostile forces, and achieve territorial integrity. We categorically reject the application of a Helms Bolton Act, an economic, trade, and financial embargo imposed by the hostile forces against Cuba and unreservedly support the efforts of the Cuban people to vigorously push forward economic construction and building of a national defense as well as energetic external activities of the party and government of Cuba for expansion and development of their foreign relations. In the same vein, we extend our invariable support and solidarity to the struggle of the government and people of Venezuela for safeguarding their sovereignty. My delegation would like to take this opportunity to express a heartfelt gratitude to the delegations of many countries that have extended and stinty support and encouragement to the DPRK with deep attention all the time to the peace and development of the Korean Peninsula. The government of the DPRK will develop and strengthen the bonds of friendship and cooperation with all the countries of the world that respect its sovereignty with a friendly attitude and will work hand in hand with all peace-loving forces of the world to establish a lasting and durable peace regime on the Korean Peninsula. I thank you. I thank the Chief of Delegation of the Democratic People's Republic of Korea for his statement.